been doing tonight? We are live. Thursday night. Is this your favorite night of the week? Uh, yeah. It's my favorite, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. I love being able to talk to the people. So much fun. I'm glad uh, we get this chance to interact with everyone, answer some questions. I am looking forward to it. So we got Brainstorm Makers, what's going on? Built on the Rock Homestead. Simply Pam, what's up? Farming Our Backyard, good to see you. Steve, McMull Steve McMullen, hello. Junior P, whoa, Junior's here on time tonight. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Are you already on it? Um... Nice, nice. Hey. Oh, my phone is slow. That's that's all right. It happens. <laughs> Frodo Davis, how's it going? Man, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. Better than yesterday, huh? Yeah. Uh, I was kind of tired yesterday. We were trying to work on the house. Yeah, I'm, I'm like moving really slow. Like it was just like it was cloudy and kind of chilly. I didn't really wasn't feeling it. But today, uh, I think I made up for it. Yeah, uh, I I really do believe you are solar powered because <laughs> yesterday there were so many clouds up and and you're just kind of dragging a little bit, which is. Kind of unusual for you. But you're still kind of trudged through it. You still kind of did it anyway, which is pretty amazing. And then today, I couldn't even keep up with you. The sun was out, and you were just like supercharged. Mm -hmm. Mindful Homestead, what's up, playa? Playa? Uh, Joshua asks, how did y'all get approved to build an earth bag? I would really love to follow in your footsteps. Thank you. Well, actually, uh, in our county, Cochise in Arizona, we have something called the owner builder opt out. So you just kind of have to tell them where you're building, uh, show them any setbacks and everything. And as long as you're not close to any washes, any fence lines, uh, septic, then you're okay to build and then no one comes to inspect or anything. So it's really easy to do uh, alternative builds out here. If you got something, just bring it up. Um, Jim Bonneman says, I can't imagine the weight of the outer dome covering or the time to put it on. How will you fill in the bags as you get higher uh, scaffolding? I think Maybe. We might need some kind of scaffolding. Yeah, it's going to be tricky. And we're, I think we're already at the point where um, I'm going to have to be up on the wall, mm. laying, like filling the bags because we're, we're getting pretty high now. Yeah, uh, I just took a measurement. It's like three and a half feet. Three and a half? From the outside. It seems like more than that. Wait, is it? Hmm. Well, I guess it's two and a half from the floor on the inside. Yeah, so, so it'd maybe... probably be about three and a half. Yeah, it's getting you to gotta... where like I can stand on the ground outside but I have to like reach above my head almost to fill the bag, so. Yes. Uh, difference in the house, I think owner builder opt-outs should be the norm. You know, <clears throat> yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm a little surprised that, well, you know, I understand. I understand the need to build with codes and everything like that. I understand. I mean, you want to build a code. And I think anyone building their own house is not going to shortchange themselves, I think, for the most part, it's safety-wise. But um, 
you know, people should have that that freedom to build how they want to build. I guess maybe in some counties, I don't know, like maybe in like city counties or something like that. Mm-hmm. But definitely in your rural areas, right? I think that's the whole idea. Like out here, you can do it in a rural area, but they still have concerns about that. Like the counties. Yeah, that's the thing. Ahead. Like we got a, it's a constant battle to try and keep that even here because they're always trying to take it away you know and they always use safety as like one of their cudgels and taking it away like oh well you know can it be built safely and everything like that can we trust people to do it right and everything Mm -hmm. like that and yeah i don't know if like I can understand contractors and stuff like that getting in on that and be like, yeah, a lot of money involved. I mean, could you imagine if, could you imagine if like how much money could be made if, you know, you were required to get a a general contractor and everything like that? Yeah, well, I think that's part of the thing, like it kind of, restricts people from having affordable housing mm-hmm. so that's like that's something i want to talk yeah that's something i really want to talk about affordable housing especially with what we're doing here and stuff like that uh something like this could be rolled out to get more people housing for cheaper prices craig asks um how far will you go before you start to step the bags in that's another thing I wanted to talk about in one of these videos. Uh, we missed it on this one, but maybe in the next one. Technically, we've already started, right? Yeah. So um... <laughs> <laughs> we went too. We went. It's really unperceptible, but we even went too far, even now, right? Yeah. The spring line um, of the dome where it starts to curve in, it's technically like will be at the ground level, but the the first courses, like it steps in so gradually that it's almost imperceptible. Mm-hmm. So it is kind of starting to go in very gradually, but I think where it's going to start getting really noticeable is I think past four feet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ascension Ranch. It's not safety. It's money. <laughs> I yeah, I can't. So it is with most things. Yeah. Uh, Teresa says, love watching you too. I'm motivated to live off grid. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. yeah if we can inspire people to uh, to get into this like, kind of lifestyle, I mean, that's kind of what it's all about. You know, if some pe- sometimes people just need a little encouragement, a little inspiration, and then hopefully we can inspire you how not to do things, learn from our mistakes. <laughs> yeah, plenty of that. DJ57 asks, do they have earth bag building codes? Yeah, they do. Um, and the uh, architect that developed earth bag building was Anita Khalili. And he worked in California, kind of developing, like working with the, I don't know, whoever writes the codes. <laughs> but did extensive testing on the, the structure and the building. So I guess there, there are codes for that, but um, I mean, like here, if, if you wanted to build a, the regular way without, with some kind of a inspection, you'd still have to have like architectural plans drawn out and all that it's kind of it adds some more costs and it would add a lot, a, a lot more cost and complication uh the nice thing about coaches is that you can kind of come here you can build how you want to build and it's just the process is a lot cheaper a lot faster you don't have to worry about that uh did you go through a realtor to find the 40 acres? We did not use a realtor to find the 40 acres. 
Uh, we did just, we'd hit a lot of websites, made a list. I think you checked the county website well, right? Lots of different areas to check for land, made a huge list. And then we sort of uh, made a road trip, went from like one end of Cochise County to the other and just checked out all the various plots of land. Now, I think we did use, no, we didn't use a realtor for that. It was, um, we used someone to kind of broker the deal between us and them, right? It was like the, what was that? Well, it might have just been the title company. The title company. That's what we did. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the super chat, another casual observer. Thank you. Biscuits for your dog. He reminds me of one we had and traveled the country with. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. Cool. Rick Crippen says, I knew Nader Khalili in the 80s and 90s. Oh, really? Wow, that's pretty cool. Different yeah. like searching on Zillow. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, I think uh, someone asked about Aircrete, doing the top of the dome with Aircrete. Um, not our plan to do so. It should be plenty of, plenty safe just doing the whole thing with Earthbag. I know it seems um, counterintuitive that having tons of dirt above your head, being completely self-supporting, not having any kind of like structure or anything like that, uh, well, it seems counterintuitive, but it's incredibly safe and sturdy. It's supposed to be. <laughs> well, if, if it's done right, and this will be our first dome, so we're yeah. trying to take it nice and slow. Yeah, and do it correctly. So, I mean, this isn't something we're pioneering here or right. some kind of big experiment. I mean, pioneering um, for us. <laughs> this is our first, yeah. but not, but it's been done before. It's been done before. The math is always there. Ooh, are you going to build an earth bag dog house for crew? I'd like to. Uh, you be, think that he's, he wouldn't use it though, right? It would be interesting to build crew a dog house, but I don't think he would use it at all. He, he needs to be able to see all around. You know, he's always, he's always laying around, but he's always on guard. <laughs> you know, he needs to be able to see everything and he's always, he's always watching. During the day. Yeah, at night he's out. <laughs> <laughs> and the other day he was he was inside uh the house. We're building. Oh garden. Yeah, that was cool. Out. Uh you can look forward to that in the next building. I looked at the next video. That was uh <laughs> that was funny. He just uh just hung out right in the house and he was relaxed. Couldn't do that today because yesterday he was able to do that because of the cloud cover. So he was over there nice and comfortable and everything like that. But today the sun was shining and it was just mm -hmm. beating right on there. The sun's getting a lot higher in the sky, I could tell. Getting closer to the summertime. Mm -hmm. People are asking how my mom is doing. Crystal's Texas Garden. Hey. Uh, my mom. I wish I could say there were updates, but I don't. Unfortunately, she is still in a facility, kind of like the one, you know, like almost right until you get out, but she is having a difficult time sort of regaining her strength. So she's, unfortunately, she is, she's past having COVID and pneumonia. You know, she doesn't have that anymore, but Get, regaining her strength taking a while. Uh, she's, unfortunately, she's not making a whole lot of improvements with that. Um, you know, she's got to stay dedicated. Now I think it's quite a bit kind of like the ball's in her court. So she's got to kind of stick with the therapy, stick with the physical therapy and keep trying to gain the strength. So, you know, it, the tough part is not being able to go and see her directly. I mean, even though she's COVID free, we still can't, I guess it's a COVID facility, so we can't get in there. So we rely on those uh, video calls and we were doing it bef almost every day until this new facility and this new facility, it's been a complete challenge for that. 
So, you know, we're just kind of hoping for her to regain that strength. And she still even can't even really talk. I don't think she's eating on her own. Um, and the last time, she can't even really swallow water. Still has a tough time with that. So she really needs to strengthen up the throat. But she's she's always making improvements, and she she doesn't like she actually doesn't like talking to us very long. You know, I don't know if we're getting in the way of her programs or something like that. But we're always on the phone for a little bit, and then she's like, "Bye, I go." <laughs> <laughs> she's got to watch my got to get my stories in. Your thing back on. <laughs> My hotspot, the hotspot on my phone works pretty well, but hers cuts out every now and then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we always got to be uh, watch out on that. Arizona Homestead Project, what's up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Jim and Jess, it's great when family try to get rid of you to do their own thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, that's... It still shows she's uh, got that uh, independent streak. And, you know, sometimes when we've been on for a while, my brother and I just kind of repeat things and she probably gets bored of that and be like, ah. <laughs> Akitas were guard dogs. They do very well, but get attached to a single person. Like, you know, and I feel like that's the, I honestly feel like crew has been bonded for life with your brother. Yeah. I feel like he tolerates us. He loves us. But he doesn't love us like he loves her brother. Like, there is a difference when he sees Peter versus when he sees us. Another casual observer. Thank you so much for the super chat. Very gentle of you. So for your mom. Thank you. So my mom's here. Hello. Hey. <laughs> he doesn't like me. Uh, he doesn't like most people he doesn't know or don't take that personally. Uh, he's got, you got to get to know him. And he really, he doesn't like men too much. It takes a little bit for him yeah. to get more comfortable with men than it does with women. He's more of a ladies man. <laughs> <laughs> Hidden Harvest Light, Hidden Harvest Grow Lights. How's it going? You both look great. Just saying. Well, thank you. Uh, surprisingly, because I mean, we were just, we did most of uh, course number six today. Uh, how many bags do we start with? Not many. How many bags do we start with? Today. Oh, like how many did, how much did oh, we have done before we had to get started? Like not even 10. Yeah, so not under 10. Much. So we had quite a bit of work to do today but we kind of we smashed it out well you smashed it out <laughs> you're like a energizer bunny today just had that power sun was shining knocking it out the apricot tiny house sorry i'm late but i'm here we're glad you're here sherry yeah, thank you for being here funny. did you ever consider doing an earth ship I mean, we considered a lot of different types of builds. And really, uh, what we're doing now isn't that different from an Earth ship, per se. I mean, it's still like the cousin of an Earth ship. You know, an Earth ship kind of uses a lot of like kind of thrown away materials and stuff like that, mm -hmm. kind of gets used and stuff like that. And honestly, our. our a lot you know, of our materials are. It's either like natural, mm -hmm. right from the ground, the land that we own, or you know, plastic bags that were misprinted. Yeah, that might, couldn't get used in regular production anymore. Yep. And we'll be using a lot of those same principles with rainwater harvesting, reusing water, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Are Akita's livestock guarding dogs? No, um, <laughs> <laughs> they're kind of the opposite. <laughs> Yeah, he might he might attack our livestock if we had any. I think the breed is actually 
more of a hunting dog. Uh, originally, they would hunt large animals like boars and bears. So, yeah, they they have a strong drive drive to attack prey and stuff. So, don't usually mix well with uh, livestock, but they might be able to. I've heard they might be able to do some herding because like American Akitas might be mixed with German Shepherds or something at mm. some point. So, but this guy isn't uh, <laughs> probably good with that. Uh, heirloom permaculture. I seen you guys in here. Hello. I'm sorry if I didn't say hi. Are you doing a yurt style roof? Uh, no yurt style roof. This uh, It'll be an earth bag dome. So... We're just going to go up and in until we completely close it in. Where do you get the bags and what is the price? The price for the bags that we're using is 20 to 25 cents, at least when we bought them. Uh, we have a video back we did a while ago. It's like where we get our earth bags from. We have all that information of like the links and everything like that, all the information about the company in that video in the description. But uh, I think the name is called Pacific Packaging Company. Joshua asks, do y'all see more support for earth bags now or in the future? Is there any momentum? Um, I th think there has been. Um, I've seen Occasionally I see different articles coming out about earth bag buildings like around the world and how they're being used in different communities for, you know, uh, really weather resistant buildings, mm -hmm. affordable housing. I don't know if there's any like huge projects going on like that in the US, but um, I, I think there's growing interest. What do you think? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Cal Earth is always busy with yeah. their stuff. That's probably like one of the biggest people building with earth bags right now. But you know, I'm hoping the style catches on. You know, there's a lot of different ways for uh to build with earth, natural building, and stuff like that. Uh, I really feel like earth bags is probably one of the most cost effective. It might not be the easiest. Well, you know, one thing I and I probably want to with something that we should make notes of this, but things I want to talk about in videos is um one of them, like we it is taking us a while to build our earth bag house. But it's just Jess and I working it out. Obviously, it's gonna take us a while, just two people doing it. Mm -hmm. But in earth bag dome, you can make a smaller earth bag dome. And a group of people can knock it out in a few days. A group of people building a dome this size could probably knock it out in maybe, what, a couple of weeks? Well, depending on the size of the group of people. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of potential there. And it can be done uh, much cheaper than we're potentially doing it and a lot quicker. Yeah, if you keep it simple, we got to... We're complicating things, so, you know, <laughs> yeah. we didn't follow the KISS rule. But... <laughs> But we're uh, we're trying to make it a little bit more and uh, take advantage of the space a little bit more. Right. Uh, take advantage of um, and kind of maximize the efficiency as far as like climate control and stuff. Exactly. Question: How is the water level in the big cistern? We're gonna go. We're gonna actually <laughs> talk about that in Saturday's video. I don't. But uh more than there was last time there is i think water is completely covering the bottom right um but it's still not quite high enough to even reach the pipe the outlet, the outlet pipe, pipe. Right. but uh water is fully thing up, filling up in there but we're not going to get any more water in there until i redo the whole gutter pipe system Love your channel. You had mentioned you had moved from AZ to uh, moved to AZ from Wisconsin. Was it difficult to adjust to the hot climate in Arizona? Uh, 
for me, it wasn't too bad. I think the the dryness was a little bit more of an adjustment. Yeah. It wasn't so much the heat, but exactly what she said, the dryness. I think when we first moved down here, I was getting a lot of bloody noses. I th um, yeah, I think I had to get used to that. But how was it for you? The dryness still, like dry skin. That was a big thing for you, right? You didn't have so much of the bloody noses. No, yeah, it was, just felt dry. <laughs> <laughs> Drink about to water? I guess the heat, like, it was a little bit of a shock in the, during the hottest uh, part of the year when, when we were in central Arizona and it was like 120 degrees and you mm -hmm. step outside and it's like, wow. But uh, uh, not not too bad, I guess. And you know, Wisconsin heat is different because it's very humid. Yeah. So, I actually prefer the dry heat, I guess. Oh yeah, I mean, like yeah, it gets hot and cold here. You know, it's definitely very cold in the winter. It's definitely very hot in the summer. But it's it's not bad whereas in wisconsin the winters are long and very cold and the summers are get brutal with that uh the intense humidity so there's like a very short amount of time and like the spring <laughs> and the fall where you had like some pretty decent weather <laughs> simply pam says my skin is like an old leather bag stop it <laughs> Uh, I will not accept that kind of language. <laughs> <laughs> I drink a lot of water. I live in Casa Grande, Arizona. Oh, yeah. Well, we didn't live too far from uh, yeah. Casa Grande. Different says it's really dry there, too. I would not have expected oh, yeah. that. Are you able to get water out of a cistern if it doesn't reach the pipe? Uh, I mean, I guess we probably we could, pump, could it pump it out, but I probably wouldn't pump it out until there was enough water to reach the pipe anyway, mm -hmm. because it would be probably too tough to really get much water. You'd have to like get it into spots because the there's folds everywhere. Oh, because of the liner. The liner. Do you guys ever considered uh, CEB compressed earth blocks? Ah, I've seen I've seen people do that, but uh, I think we looked at that a little bit. But you would need a machine to do that. I think you could build something yourself or something like that. I mean, it's not bad. Uh, you can probably like build as many blocks as you want to create the thickness of you want and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But uh, again, you still kind of need well, you could. There are ways I think you can build it without doing a roof, can you? I thought I saw most most other types of builds, you need some type of traditional roof style to go over that. I think that killed like a lot of different styles of building for us. Yeah, we were pretty set on not having a roof. I... But of course, the first thing we did was build a giant roof. <laughs> now we want to be done with roofs. <laughs> Would you guys ever build a second cistern to pump out your current maximum water supply? I want to be building a lot of cisterns. Mm -hmm. This is definitely not going to be the first cistern we build. We're definitely going to build more. We're going to take what we learned from this one. It's not going to be the first. We're going to build more. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That's why she's here. Because I can't talk right. But this is uh, definitely not going to be the last cistern we build out here i definitely want to build more uh, i definitely want different do different styles of building maybe uh do a tank out of ferro cement um maybe do one with uh crushed limestone mm -hmm. oh yeah which is kind of just like building with earth bags but you fill it with crushed limestone and then as it gets wet over time and dries it actually solidifies even more so that's very exciting and oh, man so many different things i want to try out that's oh, so much to do in so little time 
but yeah, we're just going to keep expanding our rainwater harvesting, more cisterns, more water catchment. It's going to be amazing. Any news on the gutters? Nope, not yet. But uh, you're you're pressing me on that too, aren't you? Just like, when are we going to have that done? <laughs> I think as long as we have something up before the next monsoon. I think I can knock it out pretty quick, but I don't want to get lazy on it and think, oh, I have time, I have time. And then I'm trying to put things together last minute. <laughs> so it's definitely going to be something that uh, I'm going to put to the forefront and just have ready to go um, way before the monsoon season gets here. Uh oh, Homestead Dreaming. Hello. Hey, Kira. Welcome to the Green Dream Water Park. That's right. That is right. I'm gonna push, I'm gonna push the limits on rainwater harvesting. <laughs> They're gonna be like, you wanna know something about rainwater harvesting? Check out GDP because they've tried and failed a hundred times. <laughs> But then I got something amazing set up. Any stained glass going on? I don't know about stained glass, but uh, we do want to do some bottle windows. Um, but you know what? I was thinking about stained glass uh, for the greenhouse. I think that was news to me. Is it? Did you tell me about I, that? I don't know. I'm thinking <laughs> about it. I don't know but something about going on in the back of her head. Because I've kind of seen some stained glass work using like recycled glass pieces, which we have. Um, and that might be cool to do. And I have some stained glass equipment that I got from my grandparents because they used to do stained glass windows, like some really beautiful stained glass windows. So. I think that would be cool to try. Frodo Davis says I'll volunteer to empty the bottles for the <laughs> bottle window. Nice. <laughs> yeah, only 96 thumbs up. What's up? Thank you, Desert Dog. <laughs> <laughs> we need some more thumbs up in here. PVC cut in half works good. Junior wants you to get out that whip before it rains. Can you get someone crew is close with to babysit and then let some of us help? Uh, you know, crew is, you know, we, we could have people out here with crew. Uh, <laughs> I think our one big thing about having people um, just pop out here to help is one with the pandemic you know we wouldn't want to subject people to kind of work in quarters um necessarily like a group or something. yeah get a big group together or something like that um but then just we're not 100 percent sure on like safety concerns something like that i think oh yeah yeah but yeah i wouldn't want anyone getting hurt not until not until we're sure kind of how yeah plus the building goes and stuff like this that. This is our first time, you know, doing something like this too. We're trying to figure things out as we go sometimes. Do you avoid eating foods that use a lot of water to prep or cook? How does it affect your diet choices? Uh, there hasn't mm -hmm. been too concern about cooking, right? No. Uh, I guess I, I don't use a whole lot of water for cooking. But that's not a conscious, deliberate choice, right? Uh, I don't know. Well, I don't know if I'd say conscious, but like, I'm usually pretty careful about my water use. Just, I've just gotten used to like living in a way that doesn't use a lot of water. Yeah, I mean, when we like shower or wash our hands, you know, we're, we never leave the water running. Yeah. Um, it's just simple things like that. I mean, so in the next video we talk about, we had to get 
I don't know if any of you know this already, but if you don't, we had to get a water delivery. So that happened yesterday. And it dropped about, probably delivered us about 3,000 gallons of water. Um, but I, I swear, I still don't know. We might have been able to make it, even with the dry monsoon season, a dry winter. We might have been able to make it to the next monsoon season, monsoon season maybe. But we had, we started uh, using, our water use increased actually with our projects because our projects all took a decent amount of water from building with earth bags to the ferro cement. We started kind of using some water intensive projects. Mm. So if we were just living, the, I think we might've been able to make it, maybe. Is it okay to ask the price of your water and is it potable or non-potable? Very good question. I covered that in uh, Saturday's video as well, but uh, it is non, the place we get it from is non-potable. It, it is city water that gets loaded up into the truck and delivered. I don't think the truck is sanitized. So technically it's non-potable, but we have never had any issues with the water. We, it goes through a couple of filters, including our Berkey and it's been just fine for us. But I can't, you know, but I'm not gonna tell people to use it for whatever, <laughs> you know, obviously. Um, you gotta take that chance, but I'm sure if it was potable water, I'm sure it'd probably be more expensive. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, and uh, the place we get it from, Maddox and Sons, they charge, the water is free, it's all delivery charge. So whatever it takes for them to get from the facility, to get to your place to fill up, and the time it gets back. So for us, it was about, it's just a little under $240 for 3,000 gallons. Crew camera time. Crew camera time. Uh, different ask, is it fluoridated? fluoridated? It might be. It might be, because if it's city water, it might be. But does the uh, does the Berkey filter that out, do you know? There it is. He's not doing much. He's not very exciting right now. <laughs> um, and see, Warren's over there. Uh, Warren uses uh, the Maddox and Sons water. He's never had any issues with that as well. Um, like I said, it's what kind of what you're, what you're comfortable with. And that Berkey filter, you said it, it might actually filter out that fluoride, right? I think, well, check on that. Oh, Desert Dog here says, if you have a white filter from Berkey, it filters the fluoride. Oh, okay. We just got the black ones, right? Black. Have you ever think of temporary rain catches, maybe tarps made into giant wide funnels? Actually, we would like to use um, tarps as maybe as a possible rain catchment, just some ground catchment as a possibility maybe someday, right? And just for like maybe filling IBC totes for irrigation, that might be something we do in the future. Mm -hmm. Elevation. Quite a third arm, but the water is good. We'll have, to see. we'll have to see. No third arms yet, but uh, we're we're at about forty three hundred feet elevation. How much of your own food do you plan on producing, Don Juan? As much as we can. As much as we can. We'd like to do it all if we can. We're gonna we're gonna push on that as well. Different says we use Berkey every day for our well water just to be safe. You know, the Berkey is awesome. It's been amazing. We've loved it. Uh, I can't recommend that enough, especially, you know, like I said, well water, or definitely if you're doing rain catchment and you just want to be a little bit safer. 
a Burke. I think a Burke is an excellent addition. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Homestead Dreaming. So there's special filters for that. An underground cistern be logical. What? I think so. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, the only thing is you'd have to pump the water up. But I mean, our cistern is mostly underground. Yeah, it is. Um, so I mean, it's a total of like eight feet, but five of those feet are underground. Yeah, I think the and the reason why it makes sense for us is because part of our house is partially buried. So we can gravity feed that water from the cistern into the house. Mm -hmm. But yeah, otherwise you might have to pump it out. That's one thing to be, one thing to keep in mind. So you get that extra support of the earth around there. Plus like it probably keeps the water more stable temperature. The upside of downsizing that. How the how are the chickens doing? Oh, well, chickens are doing pretty good. Getting um, by with the the cold temps and everything like that. They yeah. probably love it better than the uh, than the summer. Than the heat, yeah. But uh, otherwise, no problems. Uh, no no feuds anymore. Well, they're always feuds. <laughs> They're being chickens, but they constantly the, have to test out the uh, the pecking order. Right? Yeah, but um, I mean, no, no major fights or anything. Truck still trucking? Yeah, it's doing okay. Um, I think there's still issues with the gauges. And, I, um, and it still loses antifreeze, decent amount of antifreeze. So uh, I'm just kind of waiting on that before getting a full fix on it. Uh, we had it flushed, but obviously it still it still needs some work on that. But I'm kind of holding off on that yeah, right now. Huh? Well, we don't need the truck that often. <laughs> I mean, it's not like we drive the truck every day. It's yep. rare. What about gray water recycling? Yep, uh, we do that and we have plans for doing that in the house. Yeah, for the most part, uh, we just use like a simple, simple pipe to basin type thing for our gray water. So any gray water we have just go usually to feeding trees or plants or something like that. So how much did you guys build today? We finished course number six today. About three and a half feet above ground from the outside, maybe two and a half feet from the inside. Yeah. It's getting there. It doesn't sound like much, though. It's about a half a foot with every course. Yeah. But pretty soon it'll be time to put in, like, windows and things. It's pretty cool. I think after the next course, after course number seven, we'll be putting in the window form. So that should be pretty exciting. <laughs> GDP radiator fund. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That'll be probably the next one. I'll probably get that radiator changed up. So different asks, do you ever think you will get uh, burnt out from doing so much dirt work? That is, yeah, I'm surprised we haven't been burnt out already. <laughs> Um, I know we've been like doing projects like this for over a year, right? Almost a year. Almost a year. 
Um, we've been filling bags. I think we started in March of last year. So in about another month or so, it'll be a full year that we've been like slamming bags, filling and slamming bags. I, I can't believe we're not burnt out already, but, uh, I feel, I feel good. Yeah. I feel like I'm getting stronger. Like I have more endurance for this. And I think it helps just keeping in mind, like our goal, like what we want this to end up being. So we can just keep at it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just keep, uh, yeah. And I'm excited. Uh, like, well, I mean, I don't know what it'll be like after we're done building two giant earth bag domes. So I don't want to talk. I want to get ahead of myself, but I can't wait to keep building other things after that. Yeah, I'm excited about what I can we <laughs> I can build <laughs> after this. Um, but the house is I'm just going to be realistic. The house is going to take a while. Patty G, hello, good to see you. I wish I was younger so I could build with earth bags. <laughs> uh probably. It does take a lot of energy. It does take a lot of energy. I honestly think if someone is uh, really interested in building with earth bags, it's going to take more than just one or two people. Uh, I think a group would be more efficient. We're just crazy, and we like to do things hard, <laughs> the hard way. Seems like it. Uh, Why is Jess always so shy in front of the camera when you're outside compared to now? That's a good question. That is a good question. Do you have an answer to that? You're not comfortable talking in front of the camera. I don't know why you're a little bit more comfortable here. I think, well, I feel like I have plenty to talk about in this format. But you don't have plenty to talk about in front mm -hmm. of the camera? I don't, I don't know exactly what to say. <laughs> and I'm, just, I'm actually pretty shy and quiet. So. She is. She barely talks to me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys... You guys, this is the most she ever talks ever. I think she gets it out right here during the live, and, and then, then the rest I'm, of the week done. she's done. <laughs> <laughs> I think this this actually helps me a lot because I do have social anxiety sometimes. Yeah. So this is kind of like a therapy for me that to kind of get me out of my shell and and talk a little bit. Uh, difference says uh jim is more crazy on camera so just has to balance him out yeah maybe that's it too that is a good uh i feel like that's the comedy classic right <laughs> i'm the straight man the straight man the... to my whatever it is i am <laughs> the other day you guys had a video of just her and i we watched it like five times yeah. uh is that the um, the garden one? Yeah, is that the old permaculture video? I'm on an older video that popped up for you. Um, that because that was just you. That's one of the few videos that you just and I you knocked that one out of the park. That was our uh, biggest viewed video for the longest time, wasn't it? I think so. Rancho Los Rosales, hello. She probably can't get a word in with you <laughs> around. Uh, I try. I try. <laughs> do you have a water well we have no well no well mm -mm. i don't know if we'll get a well eventually or not but we'd like to do as much rainwater harvesting as we can i'm not ruling that out. i mean uh, we would never rule out a well but it it always it makes me nervous uh possibly drilling for a well and then not getting water you know that that's what would like kill me if we spent a ton of money on a well and then we end up not hitting water yeah so for me i think at least right now unless we have money to just like hey you know what let's just gamble on this <laughs> i think rainwater harvesting makes more sense because uh you can build structures you can have um you can do multiple things with uh you know while trying to collect rainwater as well it's a permaculture way 
Yeah, uh, Jess is too busy getting things done to, <laughs> to talk. Yeah, she's the one out there working, and I she does all the work, and I do the dancing. That's how it works. <laughs> Someone's got to do the dancing. <laughs> Even Life Prices asked what our go-to meal was. Um, I guess lately I've been doing a lot of like skillet meals where I just cut a bunch of stuff up and throw it in a skillet. It's quick and works and usually involves sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes and onions. That's all we've been eating. <laughs> and just whatever else we have. Yep, uh, with rainwater, you don't have to worry about hard water or dissolved irons. That's a huge plus. There are so many pluses to rainwater harvesting. I mean, I get, I get why people do wells. You know, people they think there's a comfort in just kind of being able to pump water uh, whenever you want. But there's so many benefits to rainwater harvesting. That's why I always recommend even just getting a small setup, even if you're got connected to city water or you have a well, just get um just a small step for gardening irrigation um plants love it mm -hmm. and oh should we mention we're doing a talk sure uh what that's next week right yeah next it's coming up quick <laughs> 17th uh university of arizona's uh water wise program Oh, asked I'm us so to talk about building our cistern so yeah we're gonna go into detail on how we did that and um probably a lot of things that we didn't even cover in our youtube videos it's gonna go into some detail like yeah a little about rainwater harvesting and stuff so i'm excited about that so Waterwise program university of arizona check that out I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I am nervous for that. I get nervous before the lives. It's crazy. Yeah, I notice. <laughs> you get more nervous than me. Yeah, you're think? more comfortable on the lives and you just knock it out. And <laughs> I'm weird. more comfortable on the camera. Yeah. Is that weird? It's kind of weird. I'm weird. We're weird. <laughs> that's, I guess that's why we're a match. <laughs> Has there been any inspiration from the My Little Homestead builds? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, is that kind of where you got the idea for doing earth bags? I don't know if that's the uh, initial oh, yeah, thing. Oh, you talking but about that. I but got into them. Once you started researching it. Yeah. And then you're like, hey, check these people. And I'm like, whoa. And I'm blown away. Yeah. So they were definitely a huge inspiration. And I think that's kind of where I got the idea for like doing the below ground i was just builds. gonna say that that's kind of like where the idea of kind of like doing the underground portion and then doing a build above that it's kind of where that came from was that their muse art studio yeah yep i'll see patty said uh same there more uh, she's more comfortable on lives in the video. Mac does mm -hmm. better on the videos. They're kind of like similar to us. I got excited about the little shout on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I saw that on the podcast. So they kind of, they're kind of talked to, uh, about us earlier on. They're like, oh, there's this couple out there. They just use the single bags. You can use that. I was like, whoa, but then later on, they answered uh, one of my questions <laughs> about the podcast. I was like, what? Yeah, they, they, uh, they're they pretty cool. They must have seen us on uh, YouTube. They kind of must have checked out a couple of videos. So that's pretty wild. Are you going to use buttresses? Yes, technically, that's kind of what the hallway is. Yeah, so um, it really helps to have buttresses by doorways in an earth bag building especially like a wider opening like we're gonna have um our doorway 
to the domes are, is like four feet wide. Mm -hmm. So we thought we'd put a hallway there to act as a buttress, but also connect the domes. So double duty. Um, Matt Zim says, I was thinking if you pumped your cistern water through a radiator, you would essentially have air conditioning. The water should be pretty cool, right? Uh, I would think the water would be pretty cool. Um, hmm. But we'll see. We'll see. I think it should be. But I wonder if there's a way we could make it even better. The cement kind of lets that heat in there. But I think a metal would just do just the same. But maybe we could paint it or something like that. I don't know. Maybe that's a bad idea. <sighs> but we'll see. We'll see how uh, we'll see how the temperature of the water stays in there. But I don't think I don't think cooling is going to be a, uh, that big of an issue for us. I really don't think. I think the summer. I think those domes are going to be nice. I think the winter might be a little harder. I think heating is going to be the bigger thing. But we won't know exactly, I guess, until it's done. Uh, how is the ferro cement cover on your sister holding up? Really well. Now, I'm so, I am amazed at the strength of the ferro cement. Those gutters were a pain to try and take down. So, you know, if we can figure out a way to make that uh, lighter, do it lighter. I think that'll be amazing. But I mean, how much weight was on that roof from that uh, downspout we made? A lot. That thing was heavy. Yeah. And that had a, that that roof had absolutely no problem holding it up. Yeah, that stuff is strong. Big shout out to Jim who helped answer my questions about my neighborhood before I purchased Forever Indebted. Oh. Don, we're always happy to answer questions. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I'm sure you do the same for people uh, asking questions on your channel. I think mm -hmm. that's one of the great things about YouTube. You learn things out here, doing kind of living the lifestyle, and then... Don's really rocking it out there. He's... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don is rocking it. <laughs> Amazing videos. This guy's like a YouTube savant. <laughs> Have you tried PVC pipe for gutters? I have not tried PVC for gutters yet. It's something I might want to play around with. Well, you, you kind of experimented. I, I kind of experimented with it. I couldn't get it quite to work. I think the PVC I used was too thin of a wall Yeah. for that. Maybe if it was a thicker one, maybe that would work. Because it's just kind of flexing too much. Are you vegetarians? We're not. We're I don't not. really have any specific. I don't think we'll ever be full on vegetarian, uh, yeah, like, like food, vegans. Fooditarians. <laughs> oh, what a... <laughs> we're food. Uh, I think we're we're going to have animals out here and I don't know if we're going to process the animals for eating exactly, but I mean, we'll be probably be using animal products. I mean, we, well, we haven't been eating the chicken eggs, no, but I mean, we could. <laughs> Crew is definitely not a veg, uh, vegan either. Uh, um, so for us, I don't think that's really uh, veganism is necessarily in our future. I think we'll always kind of be having animal or animal products yeah we're i mean i feel like we're still kind of working out what kind of diet works best for us as far as our health and uh what we're doing out here what's practical what just makes sense for our situation 
and uh, we've tried a lot of different things and so we're I mean we try to be kind of open with that just yeah uh but I think more than likely uh we're gonna it's gonna be a very probably plant heavy diet you know we're gonna try and grow a lot more food and, and yeah crew is definitely not vegan <laughs> no vegan akitas uh I but tried giving him a blueberry today and he tried eating work? it and he he tried like a few times and he spit it out oh is that what that was on that yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh but man that is it the time our time is up goes so quickly doesn't it yeah uh so thank you very much everyone for joining us tonight um always a great time we're always happy to get a chance to answer the questions that you may have talk a little bit about what's happened during our week we added some new moderators tonight uh, a lot of uh, neighbors people living around us but all of our moderators they do such an amazing job uh, anyone in blue don't forget to check them out because they help these lives run so smoothly thank you to the moderators thank you so much thank you all for joining us have a good night, everyone. Don't forget that video comes out Saturday. It's all going to be about the build and rainwater harvesting, all, all good things. <laughs> all right. Night, everyone. Night.